Hello, welcome back to Rachel's Studio Watercolor Workshop. And in today's video, we're going to talk about five tips on how to paint leopard spots and five tips on how to paint leopard eyes for a total of 10 tips on how to paint this beautiful clouded leopard. And this is a video created from outtakes from my five session, two and a half hour long video tutorial for my Patreon students that goes in depth on how I painted this clouded leopard in real time. So if you would like to join me on Patreon and learn more in depth how to paint this complete painting along with 20 other complete tutorials that I have in my library, you can join for $5 and you will get instant access to all those videos and free downloadable traceables, supply lists, and reference photos of the pictures that you can paint and you can sell your original paintings that you do from my tutorials. All I ask is that you tag me in your social media posts when you paint a picture from one of my tutorials. All right, let's get started with this leopard. Tip number one on spots is that you want to point, paint spots on moist paper, but not just any moist paper. You want it to be semi-moist paper, which means that usually what I do is I get my paper really wet and then I wait. I let the water soak into my paper until it's just the right consistency to receive my paint and that means usually that the paper is starting to pucker up a little and it's still got a sheen on it but it's not um, really really wet and definitely no puddles you cannot do this when you paint on watercolor paper that has puddles of water on it because then the paint will just bloom out uncontrollably across the whole paper you want to let your paper dry enough that when you put the paint on your paper, it will hold, hold its shape but blossom a little tiny bit so it holds its shape but the edges stay soft. So the name of the game of painting spots on leopards is keeping the edges soft and the best way to do that is to paint onto wet paper. Now, if you paint a black dot onto completely dry paper, and you don't want to reverse course, then what you can do as an alternative is to give it a spritz or two of water from a spray bottle, and that can work. That might work for you. So you can try that if you find yourself in the territory of dry paper and you made a mark and you don't want to reverse and, and take it back up, you can just spray it. So that's a little side tip for you. All right, so tip number two in uh, painting spots on leopards is work in sections. Because the moisture level on your paper is so important, it's impossible to paint uh, all of the spots in one session, most likely, especially if you're painting on a larger painting. Uh, this is an 8x10 here, and I had to work in sections even though an 8x10 isn't that big. So you moisten the section you want to do, you like moisten a quarter of the painting, for example, and then let that paper dry a little bit and then do your paint dots when the paper is just the right amount of moistness for your paint. So that's the best way to go about it, I've found, is to work in sections. Tip number three is when you paint on your semi-moist paper, you also need to pay close attention to how much water to paint ratio you have in your brush. And the best ratio is to have a, a little bit of water and a lot of paint, cream consistency paint. And the best way to get a nice even amount of cream consistency paint in your, in your brush is to paint, uh, scrub your moist brush into your paint pans uh, and scrub quite a bit so you loosen and activate a lot of the watercolor and then mix and scrub it around on your palette to get it all creamy and mixed together well in your brush before you apply it to the paper. So you also want to pay close attention not only to how, how moist your paper is but how much water you have in your paintbrush. Tip number four 
to painting good spots is use good paper. If you use cheap watercolor paper or some other kind of paper, then the darkness of the spots will not hold up. It will not stay dark. The, the paint will absorb incorrectly into your paper and it won't get dark enough to make good, dark, high contrasting spots. You want your spots really dark. And sometimes what you might want to do is even go in and put a second layer over your spots after your, your first layer dries. But you're not going to be able to get the depth of darkness that you need if you don't use good watercolor paper. So that's my tip number four on how to create successful spots on a leopard painting. Tip number five is my color uh, choices for spots. And to be honest, most of the time when I paint watercolor um, dots on leopards, I just use a simple lamp black. And I like lamp black because it's somewhat granular um, it's a nice, heavy, thick, opaque paint that I think is perfect for painting dots. Now, if you're a purist and you want to do a mix to uh, theoretically get a more interesting black, then you can use a mix of ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. That makes a very dark black. Or you can use burnt umber and ultramarine blue, or you can use indigo blue and lamp black, which by the way, indigo blue by Winsor & Newton is basically a convenience mix of lamp black anyway, plus phthalo blue. And phthalo blue is another option. I haven't tried it much. Phthalo blue um, blooms a lot more than ultramarine blue, so it might react differently. So you just have to experiment with it. But mixes with phthalo blue do make very beautiful, dark, luminous black, so stay black. Once you get them on the paper, they don't have much of a drying shift. A drying shift is when you paint your paint onto the paper, it looks black or very dark, but as it dries, it lightens. That's called the drying shift. And th the phthalo blues are pretty good at not having much of a drying shift, so that's why phthalo blue is recommended frequently to make good, nice, dark mixes, but I usually choose not to use phthalo blue because one, it explodes onto wet paper, and uh, meaning that it moves across the paper quickly, it's hard to control, it's a strong blue that will take over your palette and your paper, and it doesn't erase well. Those are all things that I don't use, um, why I don't like to use phthalo blue very much. So that being said, just know that if you want to try experimenting with phthalo blue as part of your mix for black, it will create a nice dark black, but I always choose not to use it. Lamp black does have a drying shift though, so sometimes I do have to layer um, my uh, lamp black spots and how I do that is I do my spot and then I re-moisten it and do the spot and paint over the spot again with another layer of lamp black. So that's just how I approach that problem. All right, let's move on to eyes. Tip number one is to use masking or white gel pen for the eye glints. You want to make sure that you have lights, darks, and mediums in your eyes. So the way I get my complete whites in the eyes is to have an eye glint, either by putting it in with a white gel pen at the very end or masking the uh, eye glint before I start the eye. Tip number two is to get your eyeliner really dark. And I use this tip in most of my tutorials, in my how to paint dog tutorial, in how to pa paint cats tutorial. And it's no different in a leopard. And these, this leopard especially has really thick eyeliner. And you also want to pay attention to the thickness of the eyeliner. In parts of the eye, the eyeliner's thicker. In some parts, it has furry, almost eyelash looking details going up into the eyebrows. Uh, in other parts of the eyeliner, it's smooth. In other parts of the eyeliner, it's thin or thick. And you want to get all that variety in the eyeliner to really add life and a realistic look to your eyeliner. So again, I paint the eyeliner. I like to paint the eyeliner on very slightly damp paper. So I get very slightly soft edges. It just, that's the best way to get eyeliner that looks like it's part of the cat. You didn't stamp it on. You didn't stick it on like a sticky note or something. Uh, it looks 
ingrained into the painting more if you paint it on slightly damp paper or you can give it a little spritz with a spray bottle after you get it on and the paint is still a little wet a little tiny bit of dampness then you can spray it so there's a few ways to get soft edges but you the most important thing with the eyeliner is to get it really really dark and so I use lamp black in my eyeliner and usually I go over my eyeliner at least two or three times I paint the eyeliner let it dry work on other parts of the painting come back paint over the eyeliner again let it dry do other things and then keep going back to it and darkening it as much as possible. It will really make a huge difference in getting your eyes to pop. All right, tip number three is use a scrubber. I use a scrubber to get soft edges inside the eye. So towards the end of the painting, you will see me do this where I will take a scrubber and I will scrub the inside of the eye. Usually the uh, lower part of the eye, I like to make it lighter and this will create the illusion of the eyeball having dimension in space, making it look rounded or more spherical. And so the top of the eye is gonna have darker shadows and the bottom of the iris is going to have lighter areas and a lot of times the way that I get that lighter area is by using a scrubber and you will see me in this video use a scrubber later on in this clip if I don't rearrange it right now <laughs> so uh, my tip number three for creating beautiful eyes is use a scrubber on the inside of the eye just part of the eye though sometimes also if I get the eyeliner a little wonky inside the eye on the inner part of the eye, I will use a scrubber to round out the eyeliner inside the eye, reshape the eye just a little bit, and that also has the added benefit of softening that edge. So I do that a lot. Tip number four, treat the, paint, the eye as a painting in and of itself. And like I was saying earlier, that means you want to have lights, you have, want to have a white, a light, and medium tones in your eye. You don't want it to be all one flat color, one flat green, or one flat yellow. You want to have a couple colors, usually green and yellow in leopard eyes. You don't want it just flat yellow or flat green. That'll keep it looking more interesting and more realistic. So keep uh, your eyes interesting by having all the values represented, your lights, mediums, and darks, and a couple colors in them. And that's why I paint eyes wet and wet. I get the whole eye wet, and then I drop in my first glaze of light paint, usually a yellow, and then I let it dry a little bit. When it's still a little bit moist, I'll drop in my medium green or a blue, and let them kind of melt together. And then I'll do the darker um, area, usually along the top edge of the iris, right under the eyebrow, right under the eyelashes, I mean, uh, because usually there's a shadow at the top of the iris because the top of the eye and the eyelash is creating a bit of a shadow in the upper iris. All right, my tip number five, what colors do I use to paint a leopard's eye. Well, for this leopard's eye, I started with a tea consistency glaze of Windsor Green Gold by Windsor & Newton, which is a beautiful, complex color. I highly recommend it if you paint animals a lot. It's a must-have color to paint eyes. And then, like I was saying, I will let that dry a little bit, and then I'll go in with uh, depending on the color of the eye, if I want it more gold, I can put in some more yellow, like some quinacridone gold, or if I want it more green, I'll go in with a cobalt, or a permanent green light is another favorite of mine uh, by Daniel Smith. It's a beautiful green, and it really punches up the colors in eyes, so that's a beautiful color, and a little bit of cobalt along the top to make the darker area. And if I really want a good strong shadow along the top of the eye underneath the eyelashes, I'll use indigo or ultramarine blue. And I'll paint all these colors wet in wet so that they don't look 
like I stuck them on. I want them to kind of melt and merge softly into each other, which means that you have to let the water in the eyes dry a little bit. You don't want to paint into puddling water. You want to paint into water that has absorbed into your paper so everything melts and merges together beautifully when you paint those colors in. And then, of course, for the pupil, you want to get it really black, but if you want a really magical looking pupil, you'll get really fancy and have a soft edge in part of the pupil and have a lighter part of the pupil and a really super dark part of the pupil. I didn't do that in this painting, but that can really make a very uh, magical looking, um, glossy, liquid, living looking eye. So that's another tip for eyes. So I hope these tips helped you have a, a positive painting experience when you're painting a leopard. And I would love to have you join me on my Patreon and paint this leopard with me in real time. It's a two and a half hour long tutorial and you will be able to paint it in real time. And the way that it works is that I have these videos pre-recorded and you can just watch them whenever it's convenient for you. It's not a live tutorial. It's uh, videos that you can click on and watch whenever is convenient for you. And uh, you can fast forward them or pause them or whatever. So it's really a very convenient way to learn because you can paint along with me because I do my tutorials in real time. I don't fast forward through anything so that you can paint along with me. And I explain everything very much in depth and in, in, in detail as I go. So I would love to have you join me for that. And I hope you enjoy this tutorial. Be sure to subscribe and click the bell icon because I do upload new videos every week. And you can also friend me on Facebook where I post live videos quite frequently and keep in closer touch with all my art adventure followers there. So I hope you enjoy this tutorial and I will see you guys next week. Take care, bye.